right. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness postgame press conference featuring the Arkansas Razorbacks. Few details for the media joining us here this evening. If you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand using the raise hand function on the Zoom. And we would ask you to please limit your questions to just one. If we get an opportunity, we will circle back with you. So with that, we have joining us this evening, Devante Davis. We're glad to have you here. We're going to first start with Scott Borderland. Scott, if you could please unmute and ask your question, that'd be great. Yeah, hey, Devo, I wanted to, to ask you about uh, the, the play of Jalen Tate tonight, just how important that was. He scored in double figures in both halves, including 12 points and, and five assists in the second half and hit, hit some pretty big shots late. Oh, he's amazing. He he played well, and like you said, he was scoring the ball, and that's what we needed. We needed that, that spark, and he did it. And as you've seen down the stretch, he contributed for us. And the last play um, of our possession, he drove, and they came in, and he kicked it out to me, and I stayed composed, and I knocked the shot down. Thank you. Next up, we have Tom Murphy with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Tom? Thank you. Hey, Devo, uh, the last play, uh, y'all might have wanted to keep it away from Max, but just kind of detail what happened on that play and, uh, you know, what you saw. Well, well, once they called the second timeout, we knew that he was going to banana cut. So we just tried to make sure he catched the ball in front of us and not behind us. And as you said, he did that, but he, we tried not to foul him as well. And so we did that, and we, we, we hoped that he didn't make the shot. And as you've seen, it rammed out, and that's what, and that's what we, we needed. And we looked up and got that, and we um, ended, the, ended the game like that. Next up, we have a question from Curtis Wilkerson with Hog Sports. Curtis? Hey, Devo, I was wondering if you could talk about some of the adjustments you guys made in the second half on, on both ends of the floor defensively. Well, we, we as a team, we really didn't need a lot of adjustments. We just needed to play harder and, and, and figure out ways to um, get to the basket because the first game we had like 57 paint, paint points, and, and that's what we needed, and we needed paint points. And we, as you've seen, we got to the rim in the second half, and, and we, we out-toughed them, and that's what it came down to, and we figured the, we figured the game out. And Jalen Tate led us, led us that way, and then there comes Moses and Justin and Desi, and the rest of the team contributed as well. So that's, all, that's what we needed for sure. Next up, we have Andre Hutchinson from Hogbeat. Andre, or Andrew, sorry. Devo, along those same lines, uh, y'all got down 12 and, and Coach Musk called a timeout. I was wondering what the message was during that timeout that kind of sparked y'all's run to get back into it. We just knew that we needed to play harder, and, and that's all it was. We wasn't playing hard. We was playing, we was playing slow. We was letting them, let them slow us down, and this was not what we needed. We, we're a fast team. We needed to score in the paint. Like I said, and and as you seen, we did that. And coach must know that we're we're always going to compete. And as you seen, we we the last couple games we played down, and we need to stop doing that. But as you seen, we finished the job. We got the job done. We finished the game, and and that's all it comes down to. As long as we get the win, we're fine with it. Next up, we have Brian Hamilton with the Athletic. Brian, please ask your question. Yeah, hey, Devo, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic here. Can you kind of walk us through your progress as a freshman where maybe it wasn't as easy, coming as easy for you early in the year, and obviously now that you're a starter, you're producing more. What, what have been the major important steps along the way for your development? Just, just, just standing in the gym, just being able to compete at practice and just become a better player and a better team player. And, and that's, what I want, that's what I wanted from the, from the jump. Coming to Fayetteville is um, – a choice that I didn't know I was going to make, and I made the right choice for sure. And I love this team. I love this community, and I love the coaching staff. And I feel that we, we, we've come a long way for sure. And me as a freshman, I, I've come a long way as well. And from not starving, from not playing, to being able to um, just have freedom like Coach Moses gives me. And it's fun playing with this team, and, and I love it. Next up, we have a question from Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Bob, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Uh, Devo, could you just kind of describe that sequence where Jalen had the ball and, and, and then got it to you? 
for the game winning shot. And I guess how exciting is you seem pretty calm. How exciting is it to, to hit a shot like that to send your team to the lead eight? Mm, I mean, it's a dream come true. I've never I've never thought about something like this. I mean, coming into this season, I was just trying to come in and just make sure I compete and make sure that we win games and being able to just compete for a national championship is crazy. And like you said, that the last second shot, um, it feels good. But I mean, just can't worry about this game. And we got to put it behind me, and we got to prepare. We got 48 hours to prepare for this next this next game. Um, play Baylor, and hopefully, hope we come out with the win. We're um, we're going to compete for sure, and we're going to make sure that we get the job done. Our next question comes from John Title of HoopsHD.com. John, if you could please unmute and ask your question. John Title from HoopsHD.com. I believe this time last year you were sharing a state championship because the season or the final game was canceled due to COVID. Uh, can you look back at how you felt this time last year and how it compares to now? Uh, I was thinking about that last night, actually. Uh, it's, it's, it's wild. I mean, we, I wasn't able to compete for a state, a state title. Like you said, and and it frustrated me a little bit, but I knew that coming into this year, um, it was a different mindset. It's not just a state title; it's a national. It's a national title now, and so just being able to compete for that, um, coming into Elite Eight, and just knowing the the stage is bigger for sure, and and I'm and I'm ready, and I know the team ready, and as a whole, we're all going to come in, and we're going to play hard, and we're going to try to try to win this thing for sure, and I know I know they're ready. And I'm glad that they trusted me, and I trusted them guys, and we're going to come in, and we're ready to play for sure. Next up, we have Jeff Borzello. Jeff, if you could please identify your affiliation for Devontae. Thank you. Hey, Devo. Jeff Borzello from ESPN. Um, I, I just wanted to – I mean, you started out the game kind of denying Ace Smith the entire time. In the second half, you guys changed to sort of doubling him everywhere he went without the ball. You know, what was the plan to guard him going into the game, and how did that change as the game went on? You know, what, what was co kind of Coach Must saying the entire time? We, want, we wanted to play solid, just play solid, um, try to shade him one way for sure, and, and, and try to, and like you said, we, sh we, we, sh we tried to get the ball out of his hand in the second half, and, and it helped us a little bit, you know, and, and I feel like that's what led us to getting the lead and tying the game up with the, with the, um, the game, and I feel that, we did a pretty good job with the with the soft traps and things like that to help us out down the stretch. I think I think that Ace is a, a great player and they was calling a lot of fouls for him and so we was a lot, we was in foul trouble so we just tried to play soft but also if we needed to switch we we we'll switch for sure. Next question comes from Kevin Brockway with CNHI Sports Indiana. Kevin, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, uh, double double tonight for Justin Smith. Uh, you talked about playing harder. How important was his activity on the boards, particularly down the stretch? Phenomenal. Um, he's 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 a great offensive uh, um, offensive rebounder for sure. And and that's one one thing I love about him. He's gonna work hard on the boards. And and if he got four fouls, he'll get that he'll get that fifth foul for the team just to get that re try to get that rebound. And that's what I love about him. And he's always gonna compete. He he played 40 minutes uh, a night, and and that's tough to do. And, you know, coming in um, as a player, not knowing not knowing how to how the year is gonna go for him. Um, he's he's coming in. He's contributed to the team. He's a leader, and this and that's what we love about him. He's gonna lead us, and he's gonna he's gonna play his hardest. Just two more questions for you. The next one coming from Patrick Dallahan. Patrick, if you could please unmute and identify who you are with, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, hey, Devo, obviously, congratulations on an awesome win. It's a really big win for you guys uh, as a team and for you in particular. Uh, you're obviously a really young kid, so you haven't had to face as much pressure as, as you had tonight. So what was it like when you had the ball in your hands to take that final shot? I mean, I think I, think I put in the work. I put in the work, and, and I know that the work is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to come, and it's going to come, and, and that's what it came down to, just putting in the work, and as you've seen, I knocked the shot down, and, and like you said, uh, pressure, pressure. I don't think I don't, I don't think it was pressure on me for sure. I mean, I think I think I'm made for them, them type of them type of plays. And, and as you seen, I knocked the shot down. For our last question, we are going to circle back with Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Bob. Yeah, Devo, it's the first time Arkansas has gone to the Elite Eight since '95, the defending national championship team, and almost one another one. Just what does it feel like to, to get this far as a freshman? 
something I don't even I can't explain this. It's, it's, it's wild. I mean, just knowing that coming from a high school where a lot of people don't get this opportunity to to now, and and it's crazy. I mean. I came to the game with my sunglasses on, things like that, and and, and just knowing that I'm co I'm coming ready to play, and and I know my team is gonna compete with me, and and it's amazing just being able to be in this be in this position right now, and as a as an individual, and as a as an Arkansas player, I feel wonderful. I know the fans are feeling good, and I know everyone else out there in Fayetteville, and they represent, and I know that we're ready to play, and. This next, this upcoming game, we're not, we're not gonna dig, a, we're not gonna dig a hole. We're gonna, we're gonna come out. We're gonna compete from the jump, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna grind it out. D digging hole seems to be working for you guys pretty good. Ah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Devonte, very much, and welcome to the Elite Eight. Thank you, thank you. We will be joined momentarily by Coach Eric Musselman. Please use this time to raise your hand if you have a question for Coach Musselman, and we'll get started here just in a second. Thank you. All right. Welcome, Coach Musselman. We're going to start with an opening statement. Like I mentioned to the media, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And make sure you're identifying yourself for him when you ask your question. Uh, really proud of our, our team, especially in the second half with their effort. We've, we've been down now in, in uh, you know, three games and, and found a way to come back, regrouped again at halftime, uh, changed up our defense a little bit more where, um, you know, we wanted to trap and leave certain players, give Oral Roberts a ton of credit. I thought they played really, really well, played really hard. Um, you know, we made a decision that, you know, that we were going to try to limit number zero as best we could on his pick and pops. Um, I thought we did a really good job limiting him to seven field goals attempted. Justin Smith did a great job. We just felt like there was no way we could let, you know, both zero and, and three both have big games. Um, and when, you know, when they went to their bench, um, we kind of left uh, the bench players and, and tried to trap the ball. And I thought that really helped ignite our transition offense in, in, the, in the second half. All right. Thank you, Coach. We're going to turn first. To Curtis Wilkerson. Curtis is with Hog Sports. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Was wondering if you could just talk about Devo's play tonight and then obviously the big shot there at the end. I mean, you know, we don't run any plays for Devo, at least not right now. We will next year, obviously. Um, but, I mean, he's just a guy that, that just balls. He just plays. Um, I mean, you, you look across the board at him. First of all, he guarded. Um, Abmus, you know, number number three, and did a, you know, I thought he did a great job. He, even though he had 25, he took 19 shots. You know, we, we held him to three threes, which he's such a great uh, three-point shooter with great range, but he did have five turnovers. And so you're asking Devo to guard um, at a high level. He goes out and has eight rebounds. He has 16 points, two assists. Um, his rebounding was phenomenal. Even Desi, I thought Desi did a great job on the glass getting six boards and um, you know, we felt like we had a mismatch in the post um, with certain matchups. And, and uh, you know, I thought Jalen Tate did a great job of scoring points in the paint. Because, uh, you know, we weren't great offensively tonight, um, you know, but, but obviously found a way to win. And, and uh, you know, I thought some of our steals helped us. But, but Devo was phenomenal on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. Next up, we have Andrew Hutchinson with Hogbeat. Andrew? Yeah, Coach, uh, you, you mentioned the early deficits. Uh, is there, has there been a common theme in these three games behind those deficits? What, what's contributing to those, and what was the key tonight to di digging out of that hole? Just, you know, you got to keep searching um, as a team, as a coaching staff, for a matchup you like. Um, you know, we worked all week on our pick and roll coverage. I thought it was decent. Um, you know, probably, you know, looking at the, the first two games Oral Roberts played, I think our pick and roll defense was was probably a little bit more effective than what they saw in games one and two. Not much, though, but 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 slightly. Um, but I thought our trapping, um, you know, and, and trying to get the ball um, out of certain players' hands was very effective. Um, you know, we didn't want to do that going into the game because they have so many surrounding pieces that are shooters. 
Um, you know, I, I mean, certainly we'd all like to get out to a, you know, to a lead, but at the end of the day, there's going to be runs. And, um, you know, right now, you know, we've been a really, really good second half team all year. Um, and you got to, you know, you've got to be able to make adjustments at halftime and you got to, you know, I mean, we basically resorted to our plan D coverage. Um, and I'm just glad we had a full, you know, week to go through multiple coverages. Now that won't be the case heading in uh, to the next game on Monday. Next step, we have a question from Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Bob, if you could please unmute. Yeah, Eric, um, I know that wasn't a design play Tate to Devo. They're basically making plays and the flow of the game. But just what did you see there? And, and um, is that something you guys have kind of worked on? Yeah, we ran, um, you know, one of our go-to plays late in the game, a, a fist out red. And, um, you know, part of the red is a, is a snake action on the weak side. And Devo just kind of read it and ran a snake uh, action to kind of semi-bend it or curl it. Um, and I thought Tate made the right read. Uh, and Devo's just a guy, you know, he's a shot creator. Uh, you know, and for a freshman, that's a pretty big stage to ask him to do what we ask him to do defensively and then to hit some of the shots that he hit. Even in the first half, I thought his dribble drive when he sliced through the defense was our best offensive play in the first half. I, th I thought he played with a different energy, um, you know, especially in the first half. And, and um, it's been really, really neat and cool to watch him continue to grow and to watch his confidence continue to grow. Next up, Scotty Bordelon. Scotty's with hog, a whole hog sports. Oh, and by the way, Devo's been walking around with sunglasses. Um, so he's feeling pretty good about it the way he's playing too. <laughs> hey, Coach. Um, Jalen Tate kind of kept y'all afloat offensively in the first half, and he scored pretty well in half and then finished with six assists for the game. Uh, I guess could you just speak to the importance of his plays? He had some pretty big shots down the stretch before Devo's. Yeah, Scotty, he hit huge shots, and, and, and just his size uh, against their guards, you know, uh, that was one of the focal points of the game plan offensively was to try to, you know, with our bigger guards was to, was to score it. Um, and we needed, you know, we needed him to play well. Um, you know, Desi provided, um, you know, really good bench minutes. But, but that was, you know, we didn't get much, much out of our bench other than, um, than Desi coming in. And Desi did a good job defensively. And he did a good job rebounding the basketball as well for his position. Um, you know, it was just kind of, you know, their bench didn't score. Um, really unique game in that aspect, but our, our free throws going, you know, going 13 from 15 to the line, not a high volume of FTAs at all in this game. Um, I thought there was a little bit more physical contact maybe, um, but we converted our foul shots, was, which is extremely, extremely important. Um, and then I like the fact that we had, you know, seven steals to just 10 turnovers, and a couple of those turnovers were you know, early in the game, we had two that we shouldn't have had. And then, and then I thought we turned the ball over um, in that transition segment back to back, just trying to make home run plays, which we're not, we have got to take great care of the basketball against Baylor. They, they're very physical defensively. They reach, swap, swipe uh, at the basketball, and you're going to have to have, be strong with the ball and make secure uh, decision making when, when you play Baylor. Next step from ESPN, we have Jeff Porzello. Jeff? Hey, what's up, Coach? Congrats on the win. Um, the, the final possession defensively, um, Devo said you guys kind of expected A. Smith to banana cut and catch the ball. Did you give any thought to, you know, just totally denying him the ball and making somebody else beat you? Well, we, we didn't really want to deny it, but we did double team. We didn't guard the inbounder. Um, and I think Thompson inbounded the ball, and he's a good shooter. Uh, Tate and Devo, we're going to, you know, we're just trying to semi use clock. Um, he got it, you know, he got it. I mean, it was, he got a look, obviously. Um, we did not want to foul either, Jeff. That was, you know, the last thing we want to do is foul one of the best free throw shooters in, in all of, uh, you know, college basketball. But we felt like two defenders and trying to keep the ball in front. What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to deny him the ball, have them flash a guy and then hit off the deny where he now has a lane. Um, you know, or an open shot with, with nobody in front of him. That's, that's the reason that we didn't deny. We talked about it. We discussed it and felt like if we could just kind of cup him with two guys, um, you know, that was better than having him, 
you know, make a Z cut and, and, and end up with the ball off a of denial. Next up, we have John Titel from Hoops HD. John? John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Um, your father, Bill, was a coach for 25 years, and Scott Drew's father, Homer, won more than 600 games, and Wayne Tinkle coached his son, Trace, for five years at Oregon State, and Jim Beheim's best player is his son, Buddy. My question, what makes the father-son bond so special when it comes to basketball coaches? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, you know, I, um, I'm sure that each, each, you know, person that you just mentioned has their own story. Um, you know, my dad, I mean, I can only speak for myself. My father was my idol, my best friend. Um, you know, I, you know, for Halloween, I wanted to be a coach. <laughs> um, after, you know, school, when I was in grade school, my mom would drop me off at the my dad's practices and I'd stay till 10 or 11 at night until he finished breaking down film or having staff meetings and I just wanted to walk in his footsteps and, and now I have, a, I have my own son on staff here and he obviously wants to get into coaching. I have a younger son who's in college and I know he wants to get into coaching when he graduates from the University of San Diego. But every, I think everybody's got their own story but um, you know when you're around it you either fall in love with it and I know a lot of coaches' sons that it, that aren't in coaching because it's a very, very tough life. It's a, it's a conversation that my mother and I have had several, several times when, when I decided to get into coaching, just how difficult it is. Coaches get fired and it affects family. And, and, um, but you know, it's, it's what I loved and, and, um, but I was warned by my mom. I promise you that. All right. Next up, we have Brian Hamilton from the athletic Brian. Eric, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. You mentioned Devo's growth, his confidence growing. What have been the important steps along the way to bring him to this point? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at sometimes uh, freshmen uh, like NBA first-round draft picks. And, um, you know, sometimes guys are just, you know, handed minutes and, and – um, you know, I don't know if that's the proper way to, to teach a player. Um, you know, Devo has turned into one of the best defenders in college basketball. That was not the case um, this summer. Um, I, would, I would actually say he was pretty far behind defensively, and he worked and he grew and he continued to come into practice. He continued to watch film. He continued to study. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of freshmen play early in non-conference and then their minutes dwindle. Uh, in conference play, you know, we took the, the opposite approach um, with, with two of our freshmen where um, they, they learned through non-conference, they learned our terminology, both Jalen Williams and Devo, and then once conference play came, they understood who we were, were what the expectations were, and, uh, and, and both those guys have grown tremendously, and, and they've done it against better competition as the season's uh, gone on, but um, both, both those freshmen, along with Moses, uh, have incredible confidence. And, they're, and, and they're, Devo's an incredible competitor, um, and he believes that he's a great, great player. And that's why he's able to take big shots and he's able to take big defensive assignments. Just two more questions for you, Coach. The next one is Patrick Dallahan. Patrick, if you could please identify who you're affiliated with. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, Patrick Dahan, CBB365. And um, you obviously mentioned that Debo was walking around with sunglasses on. Was he, did he have like a little confident strut? And like what kind of sunglasses was he wearing when he was walking around? I don't, I'm not, they're not the type of sunglasses I would wear down in Pacific Beach in San Diego. But um, he, I don't know, he just all of a sudden, the last 48 hours, been wearing sunglasses into our uh, dinners or breakfasts or um, yeah, so I think he's got <laughs> – uh, if he's wearing them and I haven't seen him, he might have been wearing them around me prior to this. But, um, you know, even when the sun's not out, he's wearing them, which maybe I ought to start wearing a pair as well. And uh, follow-up questions about people that wear sunglasses. A uh, PFT commenter of, um, pardon my take, one of your biggest fans, uh, what do you have to say to those guys at pardon my take about your post-game celebration so far? Uh, we we didn't celebrate too much. We just got to get ready. But, I mean, I love part of my take. They know that. <laughs>
All right. All thank, right. You. thank you, Patrick. Our last question this evening comes from Bob Holt again with the Democrat Gazette. Yeah, Eric, in 2018 and 16, you had a heartbreaker against uh, Loyola, and, and then you know tonight you you're on the, the the good side of one of those tight games. Kind of, how would you compare and contrast the, the emotions? You know what you're feeling now compared to what that was like, and how sweet is it to be in the Elite Eight? I mean, it's an incredible feeling to be in a, in an Elite Eight. Um, you know, just our second year. It's it's I can't I really can't describe it, Bob. Um, you know, yeah, it was I mean, when uh, when they took the last three, because against Loyola it was a it was a sidestep three, almost in the same exact spot on the floor, and we had defended it perfectly, and they made the shot, and um, you know we were probably one shot away from from beating Loyola and being in the Elite Eight that year, and um, I still think about that shot over and over. Um, I guess tonight the basketball gods were looking over us. All right. Thank you. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks, Coach Musselman. Welcome to the Elite Eight. That's it for the postgame news conference tonight. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com backslash transcript. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.baritone.com. Thanks for joining us this evening at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Have a great rest of your night.